SpaceX has done it again with Starship, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in space exploration. While Ship 33 faced some challenges, Super Heavy Booster 14 pulled off a spectacular feat, landing flawlessly on the Megazilla arm for the second time. This incredible achievement signals a bold new chapter for the aerospace industry. However, what happened to Ship 33? Why is B-14's success such a game changer? And how have SpaceX and Elon Musk responded to this historic moment? Get ready to dive into the excitement on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We were all eagerly anticipating Flight 7, the first V-2 mission featuring numerous upgrades and new objectives, and the first flight of 2025. The excitement was palpable, driven by the fact that Starship had encountered several delays before, and SpaceX's ability to meet those expectations only amplified the anticipation. About an hour before the flight, Starbase was buzzing with activity, fueling and engine chill procedures were progressing smoothly, with the company confirming that the fuel load had reached 4,900 metric tons or 10.8 million pounds, showcasing the remarkable efficiency of the V2 upgrade. As the launch time drew near, the water deluge system was activated without a hitch, as is customary for SpaceX launches. Then, precisely at 4.37 p.m. Central, a new schedule updated by SpaceX just hours before the launch, the 33 engines of Super Heavy ignited, propelling the seventh Starship into space. The estimated thrust remained impressive at more than 7,000 tons or about 16 million pounds. During ascent, we witnessed the engines firing steadily, allowing the rocket to surpass max Q. At T plus 2 minutes 35 seconds, the super heavy engines shut down, followed by the engine activation for ship. Thanks to the hot staging mechanism, the two stages separated smoothly, marking another successful step in the mission. From that point on, the two stages embarked on their individual journeys, but naturally all eyes were on Super Heavy, which was scheduled to be caught by the Mechazilla arm. At T plus 3 minutes 45 seconds, the hot staging jettison step occurred. Unlike previous instances where this process was shown from afar, SpaceX positioned the camera angles to capture the top of the booster and its body. This new angle provided us with incredible new footage, particularly the stunning view of the methane tank's pipes on Super Heavy. Absolutely breathtaking. With these successes, SpaceX moved forward with the booster landing process, relying on the support of the engines and grid fins. After the jettison of the hot stage, Super Heavy entered the transonic stage. At T plus 6 minutes 19 seconds, the bottom cam came online allowing us another view of the glowing engine compartment reminiscent of what we had seen at B-12, signaling the anticipation of a successful landing. And as expected, that success materialized. At T plus 6 minutes 31 seconds, when Super Heavy reached an altitude of 1 kilometer and a speed of 1,238 kilometers per hour, all the gimbal engines in the middle and inner rings fired to assist with deceleration and navigation. This moment was a pleasant surprise, especially after the separation step at T plus 2 minutes 44 seconds when Super Heavy ignited its engines again, but one engine in the middle ring failed to ignite. That failure initially caused concern, as it suggested something may have gone wrong. However, the landing sequence unfolded smoothly with all 13 engines plus the previously mentioned middle ring engine contributing to the deceleration and navigation. By T plus 6 minutes and 37 seconds, the middle engines were shut down, leaving only the three inner engines in operation, which continued to rapidly slow the vehicle's speed. At this point, we could see the destination clearly, the tower, with the Megazilla arm extending to catch the Super Heavy. With a combination of engine power and grit fins, Super Heavy gradually closed in on the tower, ultimately aligning perfectly with the chopstick at T plus 6 minutes and 46 seconds. The chopstick smoothly closed to secure the booster. And by T plus 6 minutes 54 seconds, the engines were shut down and Super Heavy was held steady on the chopstick. The landing was flawless. There was no fire or any other issues following touchdown. Unlike the B-12 flight, where a fire broke out after landing and caused minor damage to the Chine system, this time everything went off without a hitch. Additionally, the communication antenna system, which had, which had malfunctioned during Flight 6 and caused a cancellation, functioned perfectly, enabling the successful attempt to catch the booster. Elon Musk wasted no time in sharing his excitement, tweeting with images, and the message, we caught the rocket. This moment was another testament to the extraordinary capabilities of the SpaceX team, who continually refine and improve their designs based on lessons learned from previous challenges. This ability to adapt and improve has played a critical role in SpaceX's rise to prominence and its continued success. Super Heavy B-14 is the second Starship booster successfully recovered, achieving this milestone using SpaceX's unique Mechazilla arm. With this smooth landing, it's clear SpaceX has mastered the art of catching Super Heavy. Let's show our support by commenting, good job SpaceX, below.
Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's exciting journey. Each successful flight brings us closer to a future of reusable rockets and sustainable space missions. Indeed, the best is yet to come. While the Super Heavy booster continues to perform admirably, the spotlight has shifted to the Starship spacecraft, which appears to have encountered a significant issue during this flight. Following the successful catch of Super Heavy Booster B-14, viewers noted an unusual lack of transition to the camera feed tracking Starship's journey. At T plus 8 minutes 26 seconds, telemetry for Ship 33 showed its altitude and speed frozen at 146 kilometers and 21,317 kilometers per hour, respectively. This abrupt halt raised immediate questions about the spacecraft's status. Reports suggest that Ship 33 likely exploded due to a critical issue prompting the activation of the flight termination system. SpaceX confirmed this through a post on X, stating, Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly during its ascent to burn. Elon Musk provided additional context, revealing, Preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen-slash-fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall, that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. Close examination of the flight revealed potential signs of trouble even before separation. Damage in the payload compartment area was evident, along with flames visible near the aft flap joint post-separation. These anomalies suggest that the issue may stem from design differences introduced in this latest iteration of Starship, though SpaceX has not yet confirmed the exact root cause. The company assured the public in a statement, teams will continue to review data from today's flight test to better understand the root cause. Despite the setback, this outcome is unlikely to dampen SpaceX's momentum significantly. Both the company and its CEO emphasized the value of lessons learned from such tests. SpaceX's statement highlighted, With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will help us improve Starship's reliability. Musk echoed this sentiment, tweeting, Success is uncertain but entertainment is guaranteed. The mishap has triggered a formal investigation by the Federal Aviation Administration. While this might delay subsequent launches, the combination of SpaceX's agility and recent improvements in FAA processes suggest that these hurdles could be resolved relatively quickly. Although the incident renders this particular flight less than ideal, it also provides an opportunity for SpaceX to refine Starship further, much as they've done with Super Heavy. Once FAA requirements are fully addressed, SpaceX is poised to move forward swiftly. Prototypes for the next mission, Ship 34 and Booster 15, are reportedly ready for action. Regarding the next mission, it is expected that Flight 8 will once again involve an ocean landing for the Starship spacecraft, as SpaceX has yet to complete this crucial test successfully. Flight 9, featuring Booster 16 and Ship 35, is anticipated to attempt the first catch of a returning Starship. Ship 35, as previously revealed, will feature upgraded landing pins to support this milestone. If all goes according to plan, Flight 8 could occur as early as late February, with Flight 9 following soon after. While setbacks are part of the process, SpaceX remains on track to achieve full reusability, a cornerstone of their ambitious goals for Starship. This vehicle is designed to revolutionize space travel by making it more affordable and sustainable, paving the way for missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Turning to another space exploration update, China's Yudu-2 rover appears to have quietly ceased operations. Launched in 2018 as part of the Chang'e 4 mission, Yudu-2 landed in the Von Karman crater on January 3rd of 2019 and achieved an impressive operational lifespan on the lunar surface. As of September of 2024, China reported that Yudu-2 had traveled a total of 1,613 meters. However, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter data suggests otherwise. According to Phil Stook, Professor Emeritus at the University of Western Ontario, LRO images indicate that the rover has not moved since March of 2024. This discrepancy, this discrepancy raises questions about the rover's actual status. China's January 2025 update claimed the rover was still active as of September of 2024, including photos of its movement traces. However, NASA noted that Yudu-2's travel distances had been steadily decreasing since early 2023. By March of 2024, the rover appeared to have stopped entirely near a crater. Initial speculation suggested communication issues with the Chui Chiao satellite, which serves as a relay between Earth and the rover. However, even after the satellite was replaced, Yudu-2 remained stationary, indicating the problem may lie with the rover itself, possibly due to prolonged exposure to the harsh lunar environment. As Yudu-2's journey winds down, NASA is intensifying its lunar exploration efforts. The Blue Ghost mission is underway, with additional landers like IM-2 and Griffin slated for launch. These missions, supported by SpaceX, are key to delivering payloads to the moon. These efforts reflect a renewed commitment to winning the race to return humans to the lunar surface. 
The global space competition remains intense, but NASA's advancements aided by SpaceX's innovations could provide a decisive advantage. In the broader context, these developments highlight the evolving landscape of space exploration. From addressing Starship challenges to analyzing U-2's legacy and preparing for the next wave of lunar missions, humanity's journey to the stars continues to inspire. Let's watch closely as these stories unfold, showcasing the resilience, ingenuity, and determination that define our quest for the cosmos. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.